Phoebe Bridgers emerged onto the indie rock scene with her painstakingly personal emo folk album, Stranger in the Alps, an album that for many has already served as the soundtrack to a generation that is transitioning into early adulthood at the most inconvenient time, many finding themselves dejected and uncertain if they'll even have a future, yet still holding out hope that one day they might be able to live some semblance of a semi-normal life. Phoebe's brand new album Punisher captures this state perfectly. On Chinese Satellite, for instance, she laments the nihilistic view of the world she has and expresses her wish to remain hopeful with lyrics that go, I want to believe. Instead, I look at the sky and feel nothing. You know I hate to be alone. I want to be wrong. Bridger's writing on this album paints a picture of a world in decay against the backdrop of her home in Silver Lake, the same town where her idol, the late Elliot Smith, has a memorial dedicated to him below the iconic figure eight mural on Sunset Boulevard. The desolate areas of California are a thematic recurrence on Punisher, and Bridgers conjures up vivid details of gutted drugstores, alien conspiracy theories, and religious imagery of screaming evangelicals and Judgment Day billboards as a metaphor for the inevitable apocalypse in the foreseeable future. Her inspiration for this was Joan Didion, the famed writer from Sacramento, who was best known for her hauntingly prolific prose, chronicling American history in California. Her influence is laid bare in several songs on Punisher. Bridger's writing begins with a sorrowful tone that she then flips on its head. In Halloween, for example, she sings, I hate living by the hospital. The sirens go all night. I used to joke that if they woke you up, somebody better be dying. In the White Album, Didion writes, we tell ourselves stories in order to live. We look for the sermon in the suicide, for the social or moral lesson in the murder of five. We interpret what we see, select the most workable of the multiple choices. We live entirely, especially if we are writers, by the imposition of a narrative line upon disparate images by the ideas with which we have learned to freeze the shifting phantasmagoria which is our actual experience. Or at least we do for a while. Paying attention to how Bridgers has opened up about going about her writing process, it's eerie how accurate this very statement by Didion is. In a profile for The New Yorker, Bridgers stated, Sometimes I'll write a song and I'll be like, oh, I actually don't feel this way, but it's a good line. But I was telling the truth. I trick myself into doing that all the time. This is just a thought experiment. This isn't my actual feeling. Then it turns out to be real. Bridgers uses songwriting as a vehicle to parse out how she's feeling and also give herself some semblance of closure to the messy and unsavory parts of her life that don't always pan out the way she hopes. Her tone is sarcastic, sometimes ironic, and always emotionally crippling. Even with a song as dismal as I know the end, one can't help but chuckle at the cacophony of hissing sounds that she makes at the end. Because as a listener, it's easy to discern that she was clearly in the studio with her best friends cracking up and having a great time, even as they pretended to be monstrous flesh-eating zombies. What makes Phoebe Bridger's writing so prolific is that rather than putting on a happy face and sugarcoating the truth, which would be so much easier to do, her writing is brutally transparent while using dry humor and wisecracks in her lyrics to soften the blow and make the truth sting a little less, which is an incredibly endearing factor that will always keep people listening. And that is the mark of an incredibly smart writer.